now on 18 News. Sioux Bend County Health officials releasing new information on COVID-19, details on what you need to know. And locals step up to help the community stay healthy during the pandemic. I'm going to have to make a decision. And I only hope to God that it's the right decision. Plus, the question on everyone's mind, when will life get back to normal? The latest from the president, you're watching 18 News Today. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Sunday morning. I'm Michaela Newton. Today is April 12th, and happy Easter, everyone. And I'm Jessica Camillo. Thank you for joining us for 18 News Today. So Jess, do we have some sunshine in the forecast for this Easter Sunday today? Yeah, so early on today, luckily enough, we will be able to get to see some of that sunshine. Already seeing that sunshine right now over downtown Elmira. We are increasing cloud cover though as we head throughout the afternoon hours and especially into this evening. This is out ahead of a storm system that's going to work in overnight tonight and into your Monday. Temperatures right now on the cooler side around 24 degrees, but we are under mainly clear skies out there already, and the clear skies that we saw and calm winds really helped allow temperatures to fall back as far as they did across the valley areas. 24 in Elmira, 25 out towards Corning. Other locations close to that 30 degree mark. We will continue to rise as we head throughout the day, but as we head into the overnight hours tonight and into tomorrow, we do have high wind watches that go into effect. For Schuyler, Steuben, and then Tioga County in Pennsylvania, this is due to we are going to be seeing very strong winds that are going to be associated with the storm system that's going to be working in overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Today, though, it's mainly going to be a dry day. We do have a chance to see an isolated shower in the afternoon, but besides for that, pretty quiet for your Easter Sunday. Details on what you can expect overnight tonight and into tomorrow coming up in just a bit. And Steuben County health officials confirming an additional two COVID-19 related deaths. Here's what we know this morning as our coverage continues on this ongoing pandemic. Steuben County health officials say the two individuals they are confirming is a 78 year old male who died while hospitalized and a 93 year old female who died in a nursing home in the city of Hornell. Now the county now has 10 deaths. 147 positive cases, 35 of which are recovered. Now there are also new confirmed cases of the coronavirus reported in Chemung County, now bringing the total number of cases to 51, 14 of which are in Elmira. They are also reporting one death. Schuyler County currently has eight cases and Tioga County, New York has 23 cases, seven of those are which are recovered. In the northern tier, there are 18 cases of COVID-19. In Bradford County and Tioga County, Pennsylvania, is reporting 12 cases and one COVID-19 related death now reported in the area. Now let's take a look at how this pandemic is affecting the farming industry. Our farmers are, are really taking it on the chin. After a year of historic floods and crippling trade fights, Iowa Congresswoman Cindy Axney says the coronavirus was the last thing U.S. farmers needed. It's just a hit, one more hit. People are, are just bleeding money. Michael Nevue with the American Farm Bureau Federation says the pandemic has sent crop and livestock prices spiraling. What would you do tomorrow if 40% of your annual income just disappeared? That's kind of the position a lot of these farmers are in. And with the restaurants and schools shuttered, some farmers are even dumping their own goods. They don't have a place to take it. We've got to make sure that our farmers uh, can, can weather through this. In a tweet Thursday, President Trump called on U.S. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue to expedite emergency aid to farmers hurting. In the last stimulus package, Congress set aside $9 billion in emergency aid aid to help farmers. But now lawmakers and the Farm Bureau say that may not be enough to ensure family farms don't go under. They can't be left behind. Illinois Congressman Rodney Davis says agriculture funding now is vital to protect the nation's food supply in the future. Because if not, then we're going to see shortages, we're going to see high prices, and that's exactly what our consumers and our families don't need. And Congresswoman Sherry Busto says that funding must include ethanol producers who've seen demand slashed. People aren't driving. Those are our, our corn growers. Secretary Purdue says details on ag programs will be out soon. In Washington, Raquel Martin. 
one of the first clinical trials to test a drug treatment for COVID-19, is set to begin in Charlotte, North Carolina. Novant Health will soon begin to test a drug created by Cytodine Incorporated. Now it will be administered to trial participation participants by injection twice over two weeks. Now this is the second phase of a trial first tested here in New York. The drug will be going to COVID-19 patients with mild or moderate symptoms. And locals of different ages and backgrounds are coming together to help stop the spread of the pandemic. People across the Twin Tiers are sewing masks for friends and family to healthcare workers and they're aiding distribution too. Our 18 News reporter Elise Kim gives us a closer look at how locals are doing their part. I have a lot of materials and some, you know, knickknacks there. I just decided, you know what, I have enough materials at least for this community. From children to adults, everyone from all types of backgrounds are coming together to do their part. Our, our granddaughters, they did not know how to sew. And I just gave them the material and kind of watched over them, told them what to do, and they made their own mask. I went to the store to get groceries and I had my mask and I noticed that the people who work there, the workers didn't have any masks. And I was thinking there is a shortage and people can sew them by themselves. And although everyone comes from different sewing backgrounds. I'm Russian. You know, I've been sewing as long as I know me. Even though it's only mask and whatnot, it's not my cup of tea, really. They're all doing something to help, even going as far as taking on projects to distribute masks. I made a website. And through the website, I list the four drop boxes around the community. And as people drop masks in the box, I contact different organizations who are in need of masks. So far, I've collected 321 masks and distributed all of them in three days. From crafting masks to distribution, the community has really shown how we can be twin tiers strong. Elise Kim, 18 News. A local youth robotics team is keeping in good spirits after the disappointment of a shortened season due to COVID-19. Although the team is disappointed about canceled events scheduled for mid-March because of the coronavirus, as well as being unable to compete, they continue putting their STEM skills to good use. The team is doing their part by using 3D printers to make protective face shields for hospital workers. Their efforts are part of a project organized by volunteers at Ithaca Generator. So far, the team has over 300 face shields, which is going to front line frontline workers in New York City. They plan to continue printing as long as the shortage continues. And while all churches have gone virtual during this pandemic, one church has found a new way to bring her virtual sermons back to reality. Although social distancing is keeping people outside of religious institutions, members of Campbell Camp Bell United Methodist Church decided to change the scenery a bit by adding faces of the congregation and some balloons to the pews, which has taken Pastor Veronica by surprise. I cried, <laughs> uh, but it really helped me to get through that first Sunday because it is very eerie to walk into an empty church. It, it really, it just, doesn't feel natural. And so by them doing that, it was really a blessing. Now, some of those pictures right there are members that are celebrating birthdays as well. And Easter, Passover and Ramadan are all in April. And this year, people are observing them a little different. Most religious institutions are closed to the public because of the coronavirus pandemic. Still, holiday traditions continue. Take a look. A typical Easter in Charlotte might look like this, but this year things will be very different. It's not often all of us are brought to our knees at the same time, uh, but this coronavirus has, has done that. As sermons move online and you log on to Zoom for an Easter dinner, Atrium Spiritual Care Director says it's a good reminder of the meaning behind spring's holidays. In so many ways illustrates how pain and suffering, injustice, disparities, torture, even death, are part of our, our story. 
It's the same for the Jewish community, celebrating Passover. All of our religious services and our classes are all being done either live streaming or by through Zoom. But Rabbi Howard Siegel says celebrating the holiday online is not quite the same. In the past, you know, people would have uh, guests up to 20 or 30 people as in their home for a dinner. Now we're instructing them that they shouldn't have anybody except those who actually live in the residence. Most churches and synagogues are ramping up their online services, making sure people still have a sense of tradition during these confusing times, knowing it's for the greater good. By doing what, we're, what we should be doing by closing our doors, in a sense, to people from the outside, something which is against, totally against the nature of this holiday, but by doing so, we're going to make it possible to celebrate this holiday again next year. In other good news, a local teacher is bringing a little happiness to her students. Local preschool teacher Jackie Prislak has dressed up in a bunny suit and surprised her students with Easter baskets. The Pine City school teacher says it took her three hours to deliver 17 baskets. And she's making sure to follow social distancing guidelines. This act of kindness even brought some of her students to tears. And speaking of the Easter Bunny, the Town and Country Fire Department will be going around the town of Horseheads with the Easter Bunny riding in the fire truck to celebrate Easter for kids that are not able to get out due to the COVID-19 shelter-in-place order. Now the ride along will be today from 11 a.m. until 2 this afternoon. And of course, to stay up, up to date on the latest coronavirus developments, download the 18 News app for your Android or iPhone device or visit our website, MyTwinTiers.com. You might want to check your bank account from some extra money. The Internal Revenue Service says it made an initial wave of stimulus payments. The IRS says direct deposits will continue over the next several days. The agency is starting with people who have provided banking information while filing taxes the past few years. But people who haven't used direct deposits will get checks by mail. That could take weeks or even months. Only people under the income limit are eligible. And former Vice President Joe Biden has officially won Alaska's Democratic primary. The state party announced the results on Saturday. He beat former presidential candidate Sen Senator Bernie Sanders 55.3 percent to 44.7 percent. Now the Alaska Democratic Party moved the date of their contest from April 4th to April 10th and canceled all in-person voting, opting to rely solely on a vote by mail amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Sanders dropped out of the race on Wednesday, two days before the deadline to return ballots. And the question on everyone's mind, when will life get back to normal? President Trump says he hopes it will be sooner rather than later, but calls it a very difficult decision that needs to be guided by science. NBC's Kelly O'Donnell reports. The president promised to be guided by science. I will certainly listen. I will certainly listen. While also relying on instinct. The metrics right here, that's my metrics. Bearing the heavy responsibility of when and how to lift social distancing restrictions set to expire April 30th. I'm going to have to make a decision. And I only hope to God that it's the right decision. I would say without question, it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. A new CBS News poll on the president's handling of the crisis shows 47 percent of Americans questioned say the president is doing a good job, but that's down four points since last week. Should Americans have to decide between staying healthy and going back to work? We're going to do both. We're going to go back to work and we're going to stay healthy. Experts acknowledge returning to work without widespread testing to track the virus carries risk. When we're going to be relaxing some of the restrictions, there's no doubt you're going to see cases. I would be so surprised if we did not see cases. The question is how you respond to them. The president clearly torn. You open up, could lead to death, and you're right. But you know what? Staying at home leads to death also. As economic hardships spiral, negotiations continue with Capitol Hill for another massive relief package. While President Trump says Tuesday he will commission a bipartisan group of elected officials, science and business experts to plan next steps 
I call it the Opening Our Country Task Force or Opening Our Country Council. But in this Easter season, the president urged those determined to hold services to instead heed restrictions and stay home. We've got to get our country cured. Let's get healed before we do this. And the time is now 714. So to come on 18 News today, a scheme to tackle loneliness amongst elderly care home residents has gone viral amid the coronavirus lockdown. More on that story coming up. If you want to take your furry friend out for a walk today, we'll see some partial sunshine early on, mixing with those clouds, even a chance for an isolated shower as we head throughout the day. Temperatures on the warmer side, though. Details on your full forecast coming up in just a bit. You're watching 18 News Today. Here are the top stories from overseas. Pope Francis urged people to not yield to fear and focus on a message of hope. As he led an Easter Eve mass in an empty St. Peter's Basilica yesterday amid the coronavirus pandemic. The vigil was attended by only about two dozen, including a few altar services, servers and a smaller than usual choir when it's usually attended by about 10,000. All of the Pope's Holy Week activities were changed, taking place with no participation by the public. And health officials in Belgium have declared chocolate factories essential businesses. Chocolatiers were allowed to continue selling chocolate eggs and Easter bunnies during the coronavirus lockdown. Some chocolatiers have tried to keep the Easter spirit up, even in hard times. One chocolate shop owner sells chocolate bunnies with a face mask. Now, part of the money from the sale goes to a charitable foundation supporting health care staff. And a scheme to tackle loneliness among elderly nursing home residents in England has gone viral amid the coronavirus lockdown, with thousands of virtual volunteers signing up to adopt a grandparent. Originally a face-to-face -face arrangement, the Adopt-A-Grandparent scheme was relaunched last month after the coronavirus restrictions meant nursing home residents were not allowed visitors. CHD Living Nursing Homes said they were overwhelmed that more than 62,000 people have registered to volunteer within days of the launch. And the time is now 719, still to come on 18 News Today. Uber will start distributing face masks to drivers and delivery workers, focusing first on the cities hit the hardest by the coronavirus pandemic. More news next.
Mainly dry Easter day for all of us. Just a chance for an isolated shower out there. Now, as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight and into tomorrow, that's changing as that wet weather making a return, not to mention those gusty winds. Details on your forecast after the break. Well, not that bad of a day for all of us for your Easter Sunday today. Mainly dry. We are starting off on the cooler side out there, around 24 degrees. And not to mention seeing some partial sunshine. That's changing, though, as we head throughout the remainder of your day and especially into the overnight hours tonight. Across the twin tiers, seeing temperatures in the lower 20s to so even around that 30 degree mark across the northern tier to even the mid 30s out towards Hornell, around 35, 33 out towards Watkins Glen and other locations still in those 20s. We are seeing mainly calm winds out there right now, and we saw clear skies overnight. So clear skies and those calm winds helped allow temperatures to fall back into the 20s. Now, as we head into overnight tonight and into tomorrow, this will be changing. We are going to watch our winds increasing out of the south southwest tomorrow, anywhere from 15 to 25 miles per hour. But we also have that high wind watch in effect early tomorrow morning for Schuyler, Steuben in New York and then Tioga County in Pennsylvania. These are the areas that could see those wind gusts upwards of 50 plus miles per hour in those higher elevations over 50 miles per hour. So this is one thing that we're going to be watching as we head throughout the day tomorrow and into the overnight hours tonight. But it's all associated with our next system that's working in a strong low pressure system is going to be working into our area and passing into the Great Lakes region. So we are going to be increasing cloud cover as we head towards the afternoon hours today. This is all out ahead of that system. We do have that chance for an isolated shower, but the majority of us on the dry side for your Easter day. So not that bad, but as we head towards the overnight hours tonight, this is when we begin to see the first batch of rain working in across the northern tier. This is where we're expecting to see the heaviest of rainfall as we head throughout the day tomorrow. But the steadiest of rain works in overnight, seeing light to moderate rain at times and including with this is we are increasing that chance to see those strong winds as well as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight and into early portions of tomorrow. Now, as we head towards mid morning, early afternoon tomorrow, this is when we begin to see that chance for scattered, strong to even severe thunderstorms developing across both the southern and the northern tier, especially the northern tier tomorrow. This is where we could see some of the stronger thunderstorms. Now, as we head through the day, any of these storms that may develop will have that chance to produce some small hail even more gusty winds in that potential for a brief downpour out there. And this is why Storm Prediction Center has a majority of the twin tiers in a marginal risk across the northern tier. This is where we're expecting to see those stronger storms. That's why they're in the slight risk. Chance to see some small hail down there. Their rainfall closer to an inch. Other areas, especially across the southern tier, close to a quarter to even a half of inch of rainfall. But 
Just remember that could be higher in those areas due to a brief downpour from any of these thunderstorms that may develop. Temperatures today making their way up towards 63. Clouds are increasing and an isolated shower will be possible. Now, as we head towards the overnight hours, we are turning on the windy side. Temperatures very mild overnight around 53 degrees. Rain is going to be working in. We could begin to see wind gusts of 40 plus miles per hour possible throughout the overnight hours, increasing even further from that as we head into your Monday. Now, Monday, we do have that chance to see those thunderstorms developing, but look at the temperatures. 70 degrees on Monday as we head into Tuesday, dropping back into the 50s. That's thanks to a very strong cold front that will be passing through, staying it steady in the upper 40s throughout the remainder of the week. And unfortunately, showers looking to continue as well. Michaela. All right, and the time is now 725. Still to come on 18 News today. Apple Maps is on track to let you know where you can get tested for COVID-19. Stick around. We tell you more after the break. Uber is distributing millions of masks to its drivers and deliverers to help them safe from COVID-19. Cities like Miami, Detroit, and Philadelphia now require public transit or rideshare drivers to wear such masks. Now, Uber says the first shipment went out Tuesday to people in New York. The company says tens of millions more masks are expected to arrive in other cities and regions around the world in the coming weeks. And Apple is working on a new tool to help people find coronavirus testing sites in their area. According to USA Today, the tech company launched a portal on its website for medical facilities to register as coronavirus screening locations. Apple will then verify those testing sites and include them as destination options on its Apple Maps app. Now, the blogging website 9to5Mac says the app will also provide information on drive through testing locations. It's not clear when this new update will be made available for iOS users. And add guns to the list of things you can now buy at a drive through The federal government signed off on a new rule that allows gun dealers to provide a drive-up or walk-up service. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives said the move is in response to questions about how gun dealers can sell the weapons during the pandemic. The guns must be bought on the gun dealer's property. Now, last month, the FBI reported more than 3 million background checks as people rushed to get weapons during the COVID-19 crisis. And CNBC's Sue Herrera gives us a preview of what's ahead this week in the world of business. 
A first wave of earnings reports, some money in your bank account, and why you don't need to file your taxes yet. All of that in the week ahead. Earnings season starts next week. Dow component Johnson & Johnson leads things off on Tuesday. A number of big banks like J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, and Goldman Sachs are also set to report. And on Wednesday, we'll get results from United Health and Bed Bath & Beyond. Good news may be coming to your bank account next week. The IRS could start sending out relief payments to eligible taxpayers and Social Security recipients. That's part of Congress's $2.2 trillion coronavirus aid bill. These initial payments will be sent to those who give the IRS direct deposit information. Paper checks will be mailed in stages over the next few months, starting in May. And speaking of the IRS, Wednesday is April 15th, but it's not tax day this year. A reminder that the deadline to file and pay taxes was pushed back to July 15th due to all the coronavirus disruptions. Wednesday also marks the debut of NBC's streaming service, Peacock. The limited rollout gives Comcast's Xfinity customers free access to the service. Peacock will be available to the general public on July 15th. Those plans will range from zero to $10 per month. Comcast is the parent company of both NBC and CNBC. I'm Sue Herrera. Get all your business news on CNBC. The time is now 7.30. Still to come on 18 News Today. Scientists say that weeks of COVID-19 isolation can feel like hunger to the human brain. Don't go anywhere. More news after the break. Much warmer temperatures today and even into tomorrow as well. Making our way up towards 70 degrees tomorrow, though. Cold front passage throughout the afternoon, dropping us back into the lower 50s, even upper 40s by late week. Details of your full forecast coming up again after the break. You're watching 18 News Today. And welcome back to 18 News Today. So Jess, what are we looking at for weather today? Yeah, so for today, not half bad. Mainly dry out there for your Easter Sunday. Temperatures are starting off on the cooler side already this morning, around 24 degrees here in Elmira. Other locations hovering around that 30 degree mark to even 33 out towards Watkins Glen and 35 out towards Hornell. We are dealing with some calmer winds out there, anywhere from 0 to close to 7 miles per hour out towards Steuben County right now. That's changing though as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight and into tomorrow. We do have some high wind watches that do go into effect early Monday morning for Schuyler, Steuben, and then even Tioga County down in Pennsylvania. We do have that chance to see wind gusts over 50 miles per hour in those locations, not to mention seeing that threat to see some thunderstorms working through tomorrow. Mainly clear skies out there right now, and as we head throughout the remainder of your day, increasing cloud cover, isolated shower possible. Mild temperatures, though, make your way up towards 63 degrees today, dropping back to only 53 tonight, but this is when that rain begins to work in, not to mention increasing our winds as well. 
chance for rain and even thunderstorms as we head throughout your Monday. Temperatures around 70 degrees, dropping back to the lower 50s by Tuesday, though. We get a brief break, but then showers making a return midweek and temperatures hovering in the upper 40s. More news and weather after the break. Now on 18 News. New York City students will not be heading back to school for the remainder of the school year. We have everything that you need to know. That's the mayor's opinion. I value it. And every state is under a disaster declaration for the first time in U.S. history because of coronavirus. What government officials have to say. Plus, what local churches are doing virtually for Easter Sunday services. We have the details. You're watching 18 News Today. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Sunday morning, Twin Tears. I'm Michaela Newton. Happy Easter. And I'm Jessica Camillo. Thank you for joining us for 18 News Today. And those stories and more coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's talk weather. Yeah, so right now, not that bad of an Easter Sunday for all of us. We do get to see some dry conditions out there throughout the day today, seeing some partial sunshine in some locations right now. That's changing as we head throughout the later portions of the day and into the overnight hours. Temperatures are on the cooler side out there, around 24 degrees right now, and all across the area, primarily in those 20s, to even hovering around that 30 degree mark, 30 down near Troy and 31 out towards Tioga right now. Calm winds that we saw last night, and not to mention the clear skies that we saw as well, helped allow temperatures to fall back as far as they did. Now, as we head throughout the overnight hours tonight and into tomorrow, we do have those high wind watches that do go in effect early Monday morning. This goes in effect for Schuyler, Steuben, and Tioga County in Pennsylvania. We are expecting to see some very strong winds with this next system that is coming through overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Today, though, we won't be worrying about that, seeing light to variable winds. We will see them increase slightly throughout your afternoon, but mainly dry throughout your day. We just have that slight chance of an isolated shower. I'll have details on what you can expect throughout overnight tonight and into Monday coming up in just a bit.
Yesterday marked the first time every U.S. state was under a federal disaster declaration simultaneously. Now, meanwhile, New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo highlighted the positives in his city's current battle with the coronavirus. As the deadly death toll remains in the 700s, Cuomo was very complimentary of President Trump's response to New York and says politics has no place in the response to the virus. Governor Cuomo started his daily briefing off with what he called good news. Good news is the curve of the increase is continuing to flatten. The number of hospitalizations uh, appears to have hit an apex, and the apex appears to, have, to be a plateau, which is what many of the models predicted, that it wasn't going to be a straight up and straight down. It was going to be a straight up. You hit the top number, and then you plateau for a period of time, and that looks like what we are doing. Now, he also spoke to the mayor's decision to close the schools for the rest of the current year. Over one million New York public school children will not be heading back to school this year. Schools will remain closed amid the coronavirus pandemic lockdown. Now, this from the New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio at a press conference yesterday morning, a decision the mayor says was reached after a long and painful decision process. It's literally a painful decision to close our schools because we feared at that moment that we would not be able to bring them back. And I said it bluntly from the very beginning that if we closed the schools, there was a very strong likelihood we wouldn't be able to bring them back for this school year. New York public schools have been closed since March 16th. Authorities in some other states, including the states of Virginia and Pennsylvania, have previously announced that schools will be closed for the rest of the year. And of course, to stay up to date on the latest coronavirus developments, download the AT News app for your Android or iPhone device. And here locally, it's Hope Church, Church in, state fully separate. in Painted Post is having an online Easter experience. They will be having three services throughout the day. Hope Church will be streaming Easter service live on Facebook and YouTube. And they will have a video specifically for kids as well. For more information of their Facebook and YouTube channel, visit our website at MyTwinTears.com. And with people under various restrictions, including stay-at-home orders and self-isolation, families and communities are devising alternative ways to observe Easter weekend. And at the holiest time of the year for Christians, churches are wrestling with local governments over restrictions. Natasha Chen reports. It's hard to keep church and state fully separate this Passover and Easter as debates rage over whether religious institutions should be allowed to stay open during a pandemic. In Kansas, the Department of Health says three coronavirus clusters are tied to church gatherings. And the I state's Democratic governor filed a lawsuit after a majority Republican legislative council threw out her order to limit religious gatherings to 10 people. In I Philadelphia, Greater Exodus Baptist Church protested from the pulpit. No, my friends, the moment the church start taking orders or instructions from the government, about what to do with her doors and her sanctuaries. We may enter into a slippery slope, but we'll never get back. In New Orleans, religious leaders are taking social distancing to new heights, literally. The archbishop, who just recovered from coronavirus, flew over the city in a World War II era plane to send blessings below. And in a show of interfaith unity, a rabbi then did the same. On the ground, St. Rita of Kasha Catholic Church held drive through benedictions. But Miami Archbishop Thomas Wenske is not even taking a risk with drive throughs He only permits his priests to hold mass via live stream. We are uh, together. We're not separate, but we are distant at this particular time. We are united in the one body of Christ, but we have to maintain this social distance uh, for, for, the public, uh, for the public good, for the common good. For those who participated in virtual seders over Zoom, one of the traditional questions asked every Passover is, why is tonight different from all other nights? That question, says the CEO and founder of City Winery, means so much more this year as he organized his annual entertainment seder done this time via live stream. With more than 40,000 views across Facebook and YouTube. And I think this can be a nice extension uh, to expand the reach and give this message a broader breath, and, and I do think that's a positive. 
Everywhere, people are embracing different ways to keep their traditions and connect both spiritually and technologically. The time is now 7.44. Still to come on 18 News Today, after weeks of isolation, find out what Walmart CEO is saying shoppers are going out panic buying. Don't go anywhere. Seeing mainly dry conditions for your Easter Sunday. We do have that chance, though, to see some isolated showers in the afternoon. Greater chance for rain and even a thunderstorm as we head throughout your Monday. Details on that in just a bit. You're watching 18 News Today. There could be a reason you're snacking more than usual during this coronavirus pandemic. Isolation can feel like hunger to the human brain. That's according to a preliminary report from researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's reportedly the first study in humans that shows how loneliness and hunger have the same signals in a part of the brain. Researchers say they found the human body's need to connect is as fundamental as our need to eat. And first it was hand soap, sanitizer, and toilet paper. But now after weeks of isolation, Walmart CEO says shoppers have now turned their attention to hair dye. Doug McMillan says since hair salons aren't open, many people need haircuts and coloring services. He says hair clippers and hair dye are flying off the shelves. Now according to research, sales of hair clippers increased more than 160% and hair coloring products also saw an increase of 23% from the same period a year ago. In rain or snow, the mail must go through. But with, will the U.S. Postal Service survive the coronavirus pandemic? The Postal Service says it will run out of money by September if Congress doesn't step in to help. Postmaster General Megan Brennan spoke with lawmakers Thursday She's asking for $75 billion to keep the service afloat. She says the service will likely see a $13 billion revenue hit this year. Now, Democrats on the House Oversight Committee are relaying Brennan's call for help. The Postal Service isn't getting any money from the Congress's $2.2 trillion relief package, and Republicans, including President Trump, have signaled a reluctance to bail it out. And a five-year-old has gotten a lot of attention for her cute and serious messages to people on how to stay safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Take a look. So I like he can make videos that help stop the virus. Nova Knight, a five-year-old from North Pole, got national and international attention when she made a video about staying safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay home, 
Um, I'm sorry if you can't go to your place. Don't go anywhere and wash your hands. I'm serious. Her so first video was inspired by. True Justin, true the video and Auntie Jasper sent it to, to me and made me want to make my own so I could help, help people not get the virus. Trudeau responded to her video thanking Nova for helping to spread the word. I was excited and happy. <laughs> but Nova understands some kids might be sad right now. Sorry that you can't go on the play dates, but you could do stuff at home. I can give you some ideas. One activity Nova likes to do is play outside in the snow with her family. This is fun! But she also has ideas for what to do inside. Stuff that I like to do while we're stuck at home is crap. What do you like to do when you were stuck at home? Nova also likes playing dress up cookies and, and watching TV, my new games on my Kindle, and lots of dress up. And Nova wants to remind people stay home, wash their hands. This is Sarah Tewksbury reporting. Bye bye. Well, for your Easter Sunday, it is going to be a nice one out there, mainly dry, chance for an isolated shower possible, but that changes overnight tonight and especially as we head throughout your Monday. Details on that coming up after the break. Well, weather will be mainly quiet for your Easter Sunday. Starting it off on the cooler side, though, with temperatures around 24 degrees here in downtown Elmira right now with some partial cloud cover out there as well. But all of us are starting off the day on the cooler side thanks to calm winds and even clear skies throughout the overnight hours last night. Dropped us down to the 20s in most locations. 33, though, out towards Watkins Glen, 35 out towards Hornell and hovering around that 30 degree mark out across the northern tier right now. Well, we're still dealing with mainly calm winds out there anywhere from zero to close to seven miles per hour. This will be changing though as we head through late tonight and especially as we head throughout your day tomorrow. We do have high wind watches that go in effect for Skyler Subin and then Tioga County early Monday morning. We are going to see wind gusts in those areas that are under the high wind watch close to 55 plus miles per hour. Now other locations that may not be under this high wind watch, we will still be seeing some pretty strong winds out there up close to 45 plus miles per hour from time to time throughout the day and maybe even hitting that 50 mile per hour mark. Now, this is all associated with a storm system that's going to be working through. We have that chance to increase cloud cover today, isolated shower possible, but once we hit that midnight hour and then after that, this is when we begin to see that rain working into our area, especially across the northern tier. 
light to moderate at times as we head throughout your overnight hours tonight and even a brief downpour is possible. And as we're increasing the steady widespread rain threat throughout your early morning hours Monday, also increasing that threat to see those stronger winds beginning to increase, especially across the northern tier. And you can even see down here, this is the area that we're expecting to see the heaviest of this rainfall as we head throughout the next 24 hour period. Now, as we head into late um, morning into the early afternoon, this is when we begin to see that cold front pushing closer to our area. What this means is we're really going to see a bit of instability in our atmosphere across the northern tier, especially this is where we have that chance to see strong to even severe thunderstorms as we head through mid late morning tomorrow and into your afternoon hours as well. And because of this, the Storm Prediction Center does have portions of the northern tier in that slight risk. This is the area that we could see these stronger storms developing chance to see small hail with anything that develops along with this those even gustier winds are possible and heavy rainfall. Now across the southern tier, still that chance to see some storms develop as well. Greatest risk for this area will be some strong winds, heavy downpours, and maybe that small hail as well. But the main threat will be across the northern tier as we head throughout your Monday. So keeping this in mind when you're out tomorrow, a, you're going to want that rain gear handy and you're going to be wanting to watch the sky, especially if you live down across Pennsylvania area. Now today we are pretty much going to be watching clouds increasing 63 degrees, so not that bad for your Easter Sunday. Isolated showers will be possible though as we head throughout your day. Now as we head into the overnight hours, this is when that system begins to work in. So cloud cover increasing, wind gusts increasing as well, beginning to see wind gusts of 40 plus miles per hour possible. Staying on the mild side tonight, only dropping down to 53. Very warm for your Monday and for this time of year around 70 degrees, but we are seeing rain and even those thunderstorms possible throughout the day. So keeping this in mind, strong to severe at times will be possible throughout the afternoon. Temperatures for Tuesday dropping back into the lower 50s. This is after that cold front passage and then hovering in the upper 40s primarily for the remainder of the week. And we are seeing the return of showers as we head into midweek. More news and weather after the break. You're watching 18 News Today. And welcome back to 18 News Today. So as you know, it's Easter today. Yes. So do you have any personal family traditions that you um, need to do? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I usually go to my grandma's. Unfortunately, not going to be able to do this this year because of everything that's going on. But we usually go out there. And it's really nice because then I get to see all my family, especially with how old I'm getting now and right. being out of my house. I don't see my family as much. <laughs> but do you used to like dye the Easter eggs? Oh, yes. And do all the, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Well, what are we looking at for weather today? Uh, yeah, so as we head throughout your day today, mainly on the drier side, we do have that chance for isolated showers. So that's not going to be the case overnight tonight and into tomorrow. This is when we are going to begin to increase that chance for rain, not to mention 
an embedded downpour is possible. Thunderstorms will be possible late morning and into the afternoon hours tomorrow. Drying out, though, luckily enough, as we head into your Tuesday, but really going to be dealing with some gusty winds tomorrow in some locations of 60-plus miles per hour. All right. Well, thank you, Jessica. Yep. And on behalf of everyone here at WETM, we want to wish you a happy Easter. Thank you for joining us for WETM 18 News Today. So today's show is next. Have a great Easter.